I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather's clear, can do. Hello racing fans and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill and Mike Heads and Drew Forrester who's back in town. Yes. Uh, after a brief assignment, a uh, nice to, a little good time to be back. away. Good to be back. G yeah, good. <laughs> uh, we Thank you uh, Randy Golding for filling in. Uh, yeah, Randy did a great job. Down. He gave lots of great insight as Randy always does. Yeah. And, uh, he's you know, one of the clockers on, uh, on the roof which is cool and uh, he can give good insight that we can't, we don't see. And uh, it was great to have him yes. last week. Once again, thanks for big thank you to him for, for helping filling me out. in. Yes, but uh, we do have seven races on the Saturday, uh, May the twenty fifth program at Hastings. Of course, first race does go one fifty. Let's get right into the action. Uh, first race does have a field of six. Uh, Nonwares of three fillies and mares going six and a half furlongs. And uh, the two horse, Ms. Viola is the horse. Looks I mean, tough. If she gets beat, it's it's going to be tough to get her beat. Yeah. Uh, she did get pressured last time by Be Quick, Be Gone, who ended up winning the race. Those two kind of battled all the way pretty much from gate to wire. The opening quarter wasn't that fast, but they still sprinted home the rest of the way, and this filly really grudgingly gave way, but still ended up second. I think the only one that can maybe ruin her day is the three flaming youth. I'm not liking the horse to win the race, but it could put some pace pressure on Miss Viola, which may open could things. Could cost her the race, which, yeah. Yeah, which may open things up for the six horse Mousy Mousy or the four horse Perianne or even the five swallows in Gal. I went two, six, four, but I thought Miss Viola was a slam dunk key probably in the Looking opener. tough. I agree. I'm, I'm all over Miss Viola. Of course, Glenn Todd off to a great start this year. Uh, and Danny Velasquez, uh, what a pickup he was to bring mm -hmm. this kid up here. Yeah, Riding great, great, saves ground on the bowling. He took to the bowling uh, very well. And uh, yeah, Miss Viola for me. I'm with you. If somebody beats her, it's probably Mousy Mousy, the Gilker horse, closing late, maybe running her mm -hmm. down. But she's coming out of a non two. Miss Viola running second in a non three. Looks like your horse. Mousy Mousy, I'm with you. Perry Ann would be the one for me as well that would round out the, uh, the uh, try. I think she needed that last race, ran a good race. Ran I can see really her improving. Good. Yeah, I can yeah. see her improving. She's a tough little filly on the raw maybe barn. Two, six, four, same horse, the same order for me. On to the second, three and up, 16, non three. Tough 16, non three. You can make a case for about everybody in here. I went to the fourth sword fighter, Phil Hall, Peter Redekop, Uh Coming out of Santa Anita, running in uh, conditional races at Santa Anita. Not running great, but getting, you know, those yeah. are considerably tougher races. Works good, and generally these horses come up from Santa Anita. Every time these horses at Redikoff seem to come here for Phil, they generally very tough. Right. And uh, I'm going to go with him on top of European, uh, coming off a good third behind Ezekiel, Brozio, uh, two pretty tough horses at this level. I can see European finishing this, winning this as well. Uh, you know, this horse has a lot of back class. Every time he's in for 16, he's quite dangerous. So I'm going to put him in the second spot. And I throw in my dad's horse. Times are a change in. Broke his maiden for eight. Tough assignment here, but uh, paid a right. big price and was wide. Looked very green his first start. Uh, Forrester not known to have him ready first out. And I was uh, galloped by them. He looked good winning. I know yeah. it's a three-year-old. I know they were looking for a three-year-old race. But. Yeah, there's no three-year-old race come up, yeah. but I, I could see him hitting the board. And uh, Reyes uh, goes to uh, Handsome Chef, but picks up Amadeo Perez. No harm in that. So I threw no. him in uh, to fill up the try. 4-2-1. I, 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 had a, I, I left Sword Fighter right out, is and it, I, I'm worried it's, about... It's that kind of race. Because, you know, the horse has great races, and the non-240 Calbred races, at, or New York bred races, pardon me, at, at Belmont were very good. Uh, he was running as good company. Went to Del Mar on the turf, ran a good third. Got on the dirt at La Salle, got claimed a distant third that day in a five-horse field, but since... Ran in an off the turf race in a non 335, didn't beat a horse. No good. Came yeah. back, didn't beat a horse. Uh, you know, maybe the freshening will help the horse, but I just, you know, the. There's I know question the, marks, the, yeah. But still, they are better horses, and I agree with you. But uh, I, I'm, I'm going <coughs> to take our own local horses. Other than Imposing Cat, the chances are on European or coming out of that good Ezekiel race. Yeah. And I thought Imposing Cat had the worst trouble of them all. Uh, this horse is speed, broke. I just kind of got bounced around. Didn't break good, and then got bounced around. Oh, poor Keyshawn Balgobin, he hasn't had any luck this year, but uh, you know, he's a way better rider than that. But, I mean, it just got unfortunate trip. Uh, lost position was last, circled the field wide, 
and ended up fifth. But uh, I thought that one ran the better race of European, and chances the European had a good trip. Mm -hmm. Chances are did not have a good trip. That horse is live as well. Yep. He was in tight a little bit at the three sixteenth bowl. If you get a chance to watch the replay, do so. You can watch the replays on the Hastings Racecourse website and take advantage of that site. I went five, three, and two, and uh, a very die left out handsome chef. He can win. There's a lot of horses in here that are that are alive. It's and, a pretty uh, uh, yeah tough I, race, but uh, a good one. Five, three, and two in race number two. Give you a the, single in the first. You can take a bunch yeah, take in a the bunch second. In there. Take a bunch. <laughs> take, hit the all button. On to the third. Uh, we don't have to give you too many in here. A twenty-five thousand dollar old yeah. horse race going six and a half. That he can get by with a one. Funny the all buttons in here. Uh, Papa, 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 and the three Silvertown. Those two horses yeah. shine above the field. I went Papa, Papa, Papa on top. Uh, just ran into a very good Hanson's victory. I think he's one of the better older horses here at Hastings. Yes. He was, the only reason he ran for 25 is he was protected. Uh, he was waiver claimed, and or he would have been in the stake. And uh, yeah. he, he's a nice horse. And Papa, 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 just unfortunate to run into that one. Hamill chooses him over Silvertown, which I can see gets four pounds from Silvertown, there's lots of pluses. There's no price here, we're not talking, uh, we're talking six to five and eight to five, so yeah. unfortunately that's what we're dealing with in race number three here. It's gonna be a one three, and I put the five dashing down in for third, but I can see Captain Jones, the all button, or the all button being in there for yeah. third as well, but one three for me. I went to, th I'm going to get, take Silvertown to yeah, beat him just because I don't like the way Papa, Papa, Papa generally. Um, I don't like the way he drifted out. He gets out on the turns. He and, uh, out. and as I mentioned Hansen before, Danny Velasquez, inside. I've seen Danny Velasquez win more races since coming here to Hastings yeah. in, a, in a, you know, small sample size, mm -hmm. sneaking up the rail. Mm -hmm. He sticks to the rail very nicely around the spo ring. And the way Papa, Papa, Papa drifts, I think he could maybe pop through yeah. and get a couple of links on him. And that could be the difference. I mean, I know Papa, Papa, Papa is going to be four cool to five. Horse. Uh, really cool horse. Got a huge number last time. He's your horse to beat. I'm going to try and beat him with yep. Silvertown. But I agree. I, those are the two I would have in uh, my multi-race tickets. I went 3-1, and I agree with you, Dash and Dawn, in for third. I went 3-1 and 5 in the third, that tough 25. Yep. On to the fourth, Maiden Special Weight for 3 and up. Colts and Geldings. Field of 6, and I did go to the 6 here. Free speech. I... Uh, didn't pick Steve Bryant, Richard Hamlin in the last race. I pick him here with free speech. Been tackling tough company down in the fairgrounds and those maiden special weights, they can be dirty tough at that winter meet By my there. standards was in the Kentucky Derby. By my standards <laughs> won. Uh, well, after that race, won he came back to win the Louisiana Kentucky Derby. Derby. Uh, I think it was about a four or five hole in uh, the Kentucky Derby. It was kind it was of only a, like 10, 12 to one in the Derby too. He was like a wise guy horse. Yeah. A lot of people, actually my brother, who's one of the horses he liked mm -hmm. was by my standards. Uh, so to get beat by him, Oh, nice company alliance. Generally, the maiden special ways at Hastings are not quite as tough as the Louisiana Derby <laughs> winner. So I'm putting free speech on top. Uh, my Grand Valentine, I thought, ran a really good race. Uh, his first start of the year here for Dave Milburn. Amadeo Perez. Did. Ran well. Yeah, and, and he got beat by Whiskey Bound. Whis Whiskey Bound came back to win a first condition allowance uh, pretty impressively last week. So that was a live heat. My Grand Valentine for second. I threw in Maven's horse, Doobie Doobie Doobie. That was a 25 last time. It was only the second start of his life. First time around two turns. Ran very well. Got a good number. And I, I really like the six. One's my next choice. After that, you can make a case for Proud and Loud. Promise of Diamond Barbs. Uh, yeah. First Maiden year. Special Weights Firsters have been running well. Touching th Promises. It's a half the Touching touch Promises. Yeah, but the Promise won, Colt, Tail of the Caddy. But I threw in Maven's horse just because I was encouraged by that second start going around two turns. First start of his three-year-old year, I thought he could maybe take a step forward, even though it is a step up, and hit the board. I went 6-1-5. Yeah, right. Got a big number. 51 against My, my Grand Valentine's yeah. 45, which I thought My Grand Valentine actually went a really good uh, race. Yeah, exactly. Behind Whiskey Bound. Yeah. I agree with the six, though. Uh, free speech. Those company lines are just too much to overlook. Uh, I know you're not going to get another good price. We're talking favorites here, but uh, free speech is the horse to beat for a good, you know, very good outfit. Steve Bryant, Richard Hamill. Uh, works have been very good since arriving here at Hastings, so... Uh, Free speech for me to win it. Put the one horse, my grand Valentine. Not the greatest of trips last time. Was wide throughout much of it. And mm -hmm. Still boxed on well to run second. This horse ran a good race. Yeah, he did. definitely deserved second. Could have been more of a threat to Whiskey Bound with a little bit better trip. Whiskey Bound got a good one and uh, outrun him. And as you mentioned, Whiskey Bound came back to win an on-two allowance uh, this last weekend. But uh, that horse is live. And I put the two-horse promise of Diamond, uh, the half brother to uh, former uh, older mare champion, Touching yep. Promise. Uh, got some good works. He's by Taylor B. Caddy. Why not? Uh, he looks as, as good as yep. anyone else for the balance. 6-1-2 for me in race number four. On to the fifth race. Uh, got a big field here. Eleven of them. 
Uh, Going to go made in Phillies and Mares. Uh, Eight thousand is the claiming price. Going six and a half. And I went to the one waffles. I liked her in the uh, maiden sixteen, so I should follow yeah. her back in the maiden eight. Uh, wasn't disgraced. Broke a little slow, but I think she'll break a little. Hopefully, she breaks a little bit better this time. Race three wide throughout much of the trip. Did lose her stable mate, librarian, uh, and bad girl. But I, I thought bad girl had some racing experience. Waffles can might be one that can move forward. I put bad girl in for second. And I put the ten horse Rockstar Red for the very good Anita Bolton Barn. Uh, good blinkers off. Excellent work tab, and uh, I thought this horse was worth a look as well. No love in here. I don't have a lot of love for anything. Yeah, this would be. Go, this, this is one of those deep, deep race. races that I left out. Battle of Eras, who was claimed by Frank Moff, yeah. Glenn Todd, good runner-up effort last time. That wasn't the toughest maiden eight, though. It's coming up a lot tougher with the maiden 16s and maiden 25s dropping, of them are in, dropping here. in here. Yeah. Maiden allowance runners dropping in. So it, it makes it a little more of a tough, tougher uh, handicapping assignment. But uh, I went 1, 8, and 10, and uh, but I can see a lot of them in here. Yeah, I went to the 10, actually, Rockstar Red. Yep. Uh, just the one start for Nita Bolton last Good year. Nice final work. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, that minute and three work. Uh, one start at two, they did start a maiden special weight. The fellow Chells paid a decent price for about 25000 at the uh, BC sale a couple years ago. And, uh, you know, well-bred. This barn's been aggressive in the past. They're, yeah. Um, no, they, they win at high around. percentages for a reason. Yeah. They, they, they get aggressive with Amadeo them. Perez, uh, just a lot of things to like. As you mentioned, that last work, I can see this horse being very tough mm -hmm. in here. So Rockstar Red for me on top, a bad girl. As you mentioned, uh, second in that uh, last Maiden 16, which a bunch of these horses are coming out of. And mm -hmm. uh, she ran a really good race in there, only got beat a length. Uh, she ran really well. It, yeah, a couple uh, starts at two. So as you mentioned, she does have a little bit of experience. So I put her in second. I threw in Hard Rain in third. Uh, better than uh, looked race last time. She actually... Even though she ran it too, uh, looked quite green uh, in that race last mm -hmm. time, and finally kind of leveled out around the turn and started to run for Scott. I talked to Scott after, and he said, you know, she's going to run a lot better last time, so I didn't want to leave yeah, her. Yeah, she was out. first time Lasix last time, and only lost yeah. a couple noses for third. Like she was. Yeah, exactly. Fifth, they were kind of bunched but it up. It just, you know, looks worse. Yeah. Than fifth by five, but a third by five, you would be, you would lose about five points on your odds. Yeah, exactly. But she's going to be a bit of a price, but I think money. she's all right. Ten, nine, and eight, for me in the fifth. On to the six, ten, eight, nine. Sorry. On to the six. This is the Vancouver Sun for Phillies and Mares, going six and a half furlongs. Field of six. Uh, I was talking to Mike before the show here. I feel like kind of a fool. I left out. Good luck to you, who won our first opening stake. But this is a completely different race. Correct. Uh, yeah. There's only one other horse other than Good Luck to you. Just the two Phil Hall horses are the only mares that were in the first stake. Now it's a different this one's story. Come up tougher. Yeah, I, yeah, it's come up quite a bit tougher. Uh, Auxiliary is a very interesting horse, but it's tough to get by here is Hannah, who loves, we know she loves Hastings. She's mm. only been beat here once. That uh, was by Tony Ann's Miracle, actually, her first race here last time. Other than that, she's a perfect 7-for-7 seven seven at Hastings. Uh, won the first stake here last year, sprinting, got beat in her second, as I mentioned, by Tony Ann's Miracle, and then, you know, ran away with a 3 old Philly division last year, never really in doubt. Uh, really nice daughter of Numani. Training for for this is just bullet, 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 bullet. Uh, John Morrison does a really underestimated job. Uh, he's done beautifully he's with her. And, and no reason. She's not, not easy. This thing. Yeah, this, she is a bit of a handful. Is a she's tough a tough girl. A bit of a handful. And of course, yeah, John's done a great job with her. So, got to put her on top. Yep. Auxiliary, very interesting horse. Uh, you know, mm. obviously an impressive form, uh, coming out of Laurel Park, where. You know, what did she run six times there? She had three wins, two seconds, and a third. Big numbers. Uh, you know, won an optional 25 there, going a flat mile by almost eight. And that's right. And was running against older mares there, too, right? Those yeah, were all three and up when she yeah. was a three year old. So obviously, this daughter of Oxford ran some tough horses. She's got speed. She can win sprinting. She can win going long. Looks tough. If anybody upsets here is Hannah, I think it's her. I put her in for second. And I threw in Yukon Bell. Always have you, you know you always have the idea with Yukon Bell that she's a route horse, but she's five for six in the money sprinting. Another one that's been working very good into this race mm -hmm. and just always shows up. A real fighter. She's gonna she give is. it her all. So I could I didn't want to leave her off the ticket yeah. and I went one five six. I know she won't cheat you, Yukon Bell at all. She'll show she'll up. Run. She may get a run, but she won't cheat you. She she'll up. run yeah. she'll run her butt off. I agree. Here's Hannah's the horse to beat. I don't have a lot to add. Uh, she's got the rail. As the position goes, unless she gets Tony Ann's miracle pushing or exhilarating, pushing quite hard, then I think she's going to be very tough to beat. Yeah. Uh, she's been working well. John's been 
very patient with her as usual and uh, didn't rush into the first stake uh, ended up in the second stake when she was actually really ready yeah. and uh, she's uh, going to be a handful i think i put the five horse exhilarating don't know much about the horse but the works uh, i mean the uh, races on paper look very good a little concerned about the works just the one work at may the fourth at, at woodbine yeah that is 50 the, and uh, two fifths that is a drawback the I saw ideal that. scenario you know it hasn't worked in three weeks and uh, doesn't have a good work over the track, but uh, still this horse, you have to respect those numbers. Wow, uh, 143 flat going to mile 16th. I know this is just a sprint, but still those races were very good. She was running in. Those are pretty quality horses. Yeah. She was getting pretty good numbers as well. And up at the uh, three horse, uh, good luck to you in for third. Um, I'm like you, I, I didn't pick her top two, but I can see her winning. I can see yeah. her running off the board. She's not the most consistent type, good luck to you, but she had a favorable trip last time. There was speed in the race, under par, Kind of got a little weary in the stretch, and she capitalized after setting some fast fractions. That's under par, and good luck to you. Kind of ran her down, but uh, I thought it was a good effort. But still, this is a lot tougher. One five three for me in our feature race for fillies and mares. And on the seventh and final, let's see if I can find it here. We don't have a seventh and final. What do we got here? What Mike, do we got? We got the old Mike, Mike uh, eight thousand three. We got the. That's okay. I can see. It. All right. We got the same horses, so you can just see where I'm marked I know, here. Bear, <laughs> Bear looks. He's going to be three to five, but Bear. Uh, uh, just looks, won this race. I know, won the yeah. same condition, going to yeah. come back. Won it at three to five last she time. She just basically won this race against the same horses. Yeah, there's no, not many. Pretty uh, much. Snappy Ginger's a new one. A three-year-old jumping right in and uh, through another three-year-old backseat right. rider jumping in, but the pretty much, and Timeless Shrug, pretty much the same uh, foes show up for uh, Bear. So it's going to be tough to change the outcome of that. Uh, so I went bare over Sweet 16, and I put the one Maury Girl in for third. I thought Maury Girl was compromised by a little bit yeah. of a... They had an outside post, didn't get the best of trips, but I went two, three, and one. I don't have a whole lot to add. Uh, bear, seven. your horse to beat uh, my seventh for our uh, good friend Praven Sorensen. Yeah, he's on a roll. Yeah, I like Bear to I win this. Uh, if it, you know, Sweet 16 ran a really good race last time for Mark Luce. Mark mm -hmm. having a great year. Just got beat by her. If anybody upset Spare, I think it's Sweet 16. After that, they pick one. Mm -hmm. No, she only got beat three quarters of length. Uh, I noticed run good. Somebody faster. I noticed run good too. Snappy Ginger just broke her maiden. Looks okay. Uh, Maury Girl, I agree. Didn't not a great trip last time. I can see her come back and run a much better. A little better. Two, three, and one. Same order, same horses as Mike. That'll do it for our analysis of the Saturday card. Up next on screen will be our picks. There we go. Mike, as always, you're up. Back in race number one, I went to the two horse. A Ms. Viola going to go two six four. Race number two, I went to the five imposing cat. Gonna go five three two. Race number three. I went to the one. Papa, Papa cubed uh, over the three. <laughs> Silvertown in the five. Dashing Dawn. Race number four. I went to the six. Free speech looks pretty solid. Gonna go six one and two. Race number five. Went to the one. Waffles. Gonna go one eight and ten. Race number six. Uh, gonna go to the one. Here's Hannah over the five and three in the finale. Probably the best bet of the day. The two bear is gonna be awfully tough. He is, she is a bear. Two three one. Yeah, the bookends look like the tough yeah. ones. On to my picks, there we go. Back in the first, I agree with Mike. Miss Viola looks very tough in the first. I went two, six, and four. In the second, I went to the Invader from California, number four, Sword Fighter, over the two and the one. In the third, I went to the three, Silvertown, trying to beat Papa, 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 who I put in for second, and the five and for third. In the fourth, another one looks to be very tough in here. The six, free speech coming out of Fairgrounds, over the one and the five. In the fifth, I went near the outside, the 10, Rockstar Red, over the eight and the nine. In the sixth, our stake race, the very tough as always. Here's Hannah over the five auxiliary and the six Yukon Bell. And in the nightcap, I agree with Mike on number two. Bear over the three and the one. Bear. Well, that'll do it. Yeah, bear. Bear. Thanks, everyone, for tuning into the uh, Saturday, May the 25th edition of Handicapper's Corner. Look forward to seeing you on our next episode Sunday, uh, May the 26th. We will have seven more live races for you starting at 150. Please tune in for that show on behalf of Drew. Uh, good luck on all your wagers on Saturday, and we'll see you next time here at the Derby Bar and Grill. I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather's clear, can't do.